Hey guys, welcome to Talk and Draw with Patrick Scullin and Travis Hansen and our great guest, Lonnie Millsap. Woohoo! Welcome, hey. Lonnie. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, you are our celebrity get. We've been looking forward to having you on for a while. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, about time for you guys. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> We've been really working to get on your schedule. <laughs> Appreciate it, especially since we're all locked up inside, you know. <laughs> I'm in uh, Antarctica right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, we're we're again going to introduce Lonnie. He's uh, a well-known cartoonist, um, New Yorker published, uh, Go Comics syndicated. Uh, comic strip is called Bacon, but it has an accent. Is it is it pronounced bacon or something? Bacon. <laughs> uh, you know the umlaut there. You know I've I've had people from Sweden tell me there's no such word, and I and you know that probably makes you very happy. <laughs> it's my word, and then I have a phonetic license plate of that same word now. That is awesome. A <laughs> y k u n. <laughs> um. And uh, just all around good guy, you know, Lonnie is uh, modest and mild mannered, but he's an awesome cartoonist and comedy writer. And so we're really excited to have him on to talk about comedy and uh, what goes into making gag comics and other things like that. Thank you. Um, and what we're going to do too is uh, while we're working, Travis and I are going to do our typical, our typical draw and, okay. uh, and chat as we go. But uh, due to some technical difficulties, I'm going to share Lonnie's cartoons while we go um, and uh, we'll sprinkle those in and have a laugh. So Travis, you're going to start us off like usual, um, giving us our drawing subjects. So today, um, due by popular uh, request, we're drawing fast food. <laughs> Not slow food, but fast food. And uh, Patrick said I could draw it with anything I wanted. So, you know, maybe I'll have a little fantasy or uh, or such. So we'll, we'll see where we go with it. Um, and so uh, I'll start it off like normal, draw a little bit on my screen and, and then we'll go from there. So let's, uh, we'll share some screens. Okay. Good. And while you get warmed up there, Travis, um, Lonnie, uh, I'll start us off with our, our first question, you know, um, what, uh, what's it like writing comedy and how, how has that process changed for you over the years or, or is it the same? Has it always been the same? What, what's your experience? Well, and you just by comedy, you mean single panel gags? I'm yes. not like a TV writer or anything. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, um, I will say that the process, first of all, I really enjoy it. You know, it, it's, it's uh, satisfying to get a laugh, uh, you know, from something that you just come up with. And, and you know, I, I, hopefully it's, uh, you know, it's not too similar to what anyone else does. But I, I, I really enjoy it. You know, I, I think, um, my process, you know, there's a point where I got like a little lazy over, you know, I've been doing it like maybe 10 years, but on my own, you know, without sharing it or anything, I did it for years and years before that. But, um, you know, the, the process is, is kind of the same. I think I'm just a little slower now than I used to be as far as coming up with things that I think are funny. Or, you know, I do come up with things that I, I like initially. And then when I come back to revisit it, you know, I, I'm sort of harder to please now, but. <laughs> so do you think, do you think uh, your taste has changed or do you think maybe you've. I think you've... it's similar, um, you know, I, there's, you know, although the cartoons are sort of dumb, I try to, you know, still have like a little bit of sophistication to them. And, you know, so you can think just a little bit. And sometimes you get in a, a mode where they're, you feel like they're all the same no matter what you do. You know, and, and that happens to me from time to time. Like, it, you know, even though the jokes are different, sometimes they all feel the same. Uh, so once I, you know, once I get out of that and, and you start getting good batches of things that are sort of uh, different, you know, they, they feel good, you know. And everything that ends up in my books, I'm happy with, you know. You know, I, I don't try not to have any filler, you know. Look at that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Little uh, goblin fast food restaurant. 
<laughs> well, you guys wanted fast food and, you know, and said I could do anything I wanted with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and uh, your comics are daily, right, uh, Lonnie? So... No, no, I, they're, they're uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay. Yeah. So I do them mine's a... Oh, say it again? I said mine's a daily. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. I, I, did, I, I did initially, you know, I used to do, I used to do it daily probably five or six years ago. But once I got Go Comics, I, I just asked for three days a week. Um, uh, I don't know how you do that with whatever else you do, Travis. That's, you know, but as fast as you're drawing right there, then I understand. <laughs> <laughs> So how many do you come up with if you're doing seven, if you're doing a daily, how many do you come up with that you don't use? Or do you come up with multiple well, a day? I do. do you... I do uh, five days a week. Okay. So with that five days a week, um, I'm drawing probably uh, like you, I do. A, um, it's, it's usually a single panel. And I set it up where I'm drawing possibly, well, I did three this morning, uh -huh. uh, black and white. And then I send them out to be flatted so I can have some base color on it. Uh -huh. And then, um, so I usually get about seven or eight a day. I mean, not a day, but a week. And I just kind of fill up. So I want to have a, I like having a buffer of about two weeks. Okay. okay. So I work with a buffer. See, I had no buffer until this time right now uh-huh and i used to you know there um you know i think before i started doing comic-con and stuff uh you know before go comics and everything you know i had like 600 extra cartoons so i you know i didn't really if i had a daily or three times a week i didn't really have to struggle to come up with something because i could just pull from one of the books right and, and you know try to pull the best from the books but after a certain time, you run out of that, and then you start, you know, uh, you know, you don't have the buffer anymore. And so I was coming up, I, I had no buffer at all. <laughs> so if a cartoon was due on Wednesday, I was doing it on Tuesday night, just sort of, you know, figuring out what it was going to be. Um, now I'm building up the buffer again. Uh, uh, it's a little easier with, without having to worry about the, the job so much. Right, right. No, I can understand that. Yeah. You know, and I set my time up where I draw until about 10 o'clock in the morning on the comics. So I start early from like 7.30 to 10. Okay. And then I switch gears to client work after 10 o'clock. Okay. So and do you do any more at night? Then... Oh, no. I'm, by the time night comes along, I've already been drawing for almost 10 hours straight. And I'm like just emotionally okay. done. You know. Okay. Um, sometimes I've got to do, uh, other projects too, art wise. Uh, and I end up drawing till about 11 or 12, but I, it's like, shoot, I'm not, I'm not 22 anymore. I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm not getting any yeah, older. I... <laughs> Wait, let's hope you're going to get older. Well, what I am. What I mean, I'm not getting any younger, but then I see oh. Sergio and Sergio's still cranking out full pages for Dark Horse. And I'm like, crap, okay, I, I have no excuse. He's, you know, and, and honestly, he's the reason why I go to cast meetings, just to be around him. Same you here. Know? He's like such a positive guy and, and friendly. And, you know, it helps that he, you know, likes what I do. So, you know, it, it's motivational. Um, and, you know... All the complaining that I have, I should never complain about anything. Because, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Sergio to me is the most interesting man in comics. That's for sure. He is. I mean, even away from comics, all the stuff that he's done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, he's <laughs> he's amazing. Oh, change that. Well, I, I was going to ask you guys before. You know, do you ever? find yourself writing comics in in imp inopportune times i mean how do you capture those ideas that hit you um well for me i actually write down a tagline or something that i find like a phrase platinum 
Uh, and I, I just kind of keep those phrases in this in this log and then I'll go through it and I'll go, um, oh wow, that's a cool idea. And then as I'm building up my comics, I just grab through the, the different things. I mean, it could be anything, you know, someone says something funny at Caps or someone says something funny at the restaurant or one of the kids say something funny or it happens in a game. I'm like, that that's, I just take whatever I can get from life and then just incorporate it. Do you remember all the time? Like, like I, I've actually written, you know, I, I do something similar to that where I'll, I'll just uh, text myself, you know, so that I'll just have it. And, uh, I, you know, or something. Um, and I will forget what it means. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, that happens like, occasionally. <laughs> you're like, why was this funny? <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, it's the best thing ever is you're writing it down. And then you're like, oh, you know, I'm sure it was really good, but I don't remember the context sometimes. Well, so I have a little bit of a better, I have a little bit more leeway of it because I have to incorporate it into a fantasy or gaming function. Oh, yeah. So I have to take whatever I find and drop it into that. I mean, even with this virus, I've actually had to um, censor myself <laughs> because I'll get an idea and I know I think it's hilarious, but I'm going to offend about, you know, 85% of the population with it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> In fact, I've got one comic that I've done and I've just been waiting for the right moment to post it, but I keep pushing it back a week. <laughs> really? <laughs> and you're going to get a response like a, a possible angry response or? Death threat, probably. I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow. That's serious. Huh? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, it'll probably be how insensitive, but really it's, you know, it's just kind of like, I don't know, as a cartoonist, we use humor quite a bit to get through situations, you yeah. know, and, and we look at life that way, I think, as well, you know, and, and I think there's a misconception. Some people think that all comics have to be funny. Right. And, and no, they're, they're not. There could be several different levels of, of humor in that comic, but yet at the same time have a really strong meaning, you know, and we take Sergio, for example, what a great example is he would draw a comic and then you would read it and you know you get that chuckle but then you start realizing that he's talking about a culture that he experienced right you know and that he would make fun of and so i kind of treat mine almost the same way i look at things that i experience you know or played or whatever but i i keep all my um all my things that i like my ideas my quotes in one document and then so i had to take that document and put uh a checklist next to it so when i use the idea i check it off so i don't <laughs> reuse it like three weeks later <laughs> <laughs> well do you ever do like uh okay so you you have sometimes well i'll tell you what happens to me sometimes i'll have a cartoon idea but then there'll be like eight sort of different cartoons that can come from that one idea uh, <laughs> um sort of different jokes not the same <laughs> joke and all my stuff looks the same anyway. So, I mean, I guess I could say that about <laughs> everything. But um, so sometimes I'll do, like, for example, I have one coming up about Isaac Newton. Um, I've done Isaac Newton cartoons before. Right. And, but now it'll Hasn't be. Hasn't everybody? No, just kidding. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, who was it? I want to say it was Sergio. That told me once and, and, and I got really lucky, you know, I mean, that's the good thing about some of these, these places where you can meet and, and talk and hang out with other creators. Um, he said that the secret to being a good cartoonist is has a reserve stock of six ideas and you'll use those six ideas over and over and over again. Oh, a different yeah. Yeah. And, and I've looked at that and I've gone through other cartoonists and I've gone through my own and I'm like, wow, yeah, there's a lot of ideas that we reuse with just a different package. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even the, the, the cartoons that I sent to Patrick, <laughs> so to state that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, Ed, I'm sorry, we cut you off. You were saying something about Isaac Newton. Oh, well, I mean, I've, I've done a few cartoons about Isaac Newton over the time. I'm getting ready to do another one. And then while I was doing the, that one, I thought of another one. But then, you know, I'm going to have to space it out over six months because 
people are going to be like, oh, he, that's the Isaac Newton guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's, you know? he's always going back to that. Story right. Isaac Newton. right. <laughs> you know, just different variations on the theme, I guess, you know. Right. <laughs> you put a different package on it. Yeah. Yeah. Isaac well, Newton in space. Isaac speaking, Newton. <laughs> speaking of your comics, I, I want to show some. But Travis, before we do that, uh, what do you got cooking here? Hold on, let me get Meats R Us done. <laughs> 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 um, just working on my drive-through. You know, Goblin drive-through. I mean, this. I guarantee this will probably end up in life of the party in one form or another because I already like where it's going. <laughs> photo of that <laughs> <laughs> so you know um and i just thought of it it's for me a lot of the comics is taking something that's mundane that happens in life and go well how do i make it fantasy or fantastic um if you notice my my little pig is peg legged because <laughs> I, I don't know it just <laughs> gotta have a little humor with it uh, we'll add some more stuff as we move along but but yeah so you know, this just gives you the idea of, of dealing with fast food and uh, which uh, I've worked at fast food before <laughs> and uh, don't ever want to do that again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, that's fun, Trev. All right. So, yep. Yeah. So we'll switch a little bit. Yeah. Let me uh, pull up a couple of uh, some bacon comics. Yeah. Bring on the bacon. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to show a couple here. And maybe if you want to, you know, peek behind the curtain, what do uh, you have any memories when you wrote these or worked on these? I mean, so <laughs> that one did, was, you know, what, what happened. That, that's what I think about when I'm at a convention. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and this one, you know, that happens when you get like, I, I mean, everybody knows you go to 7-Eleven and it's too big, you know. So you still buy it. Uh, yeah. I mean, because, you know, it's like, it's the best deal ever for any kind of liquid, you know, that that's, <laughs> you know. Um, but, uh, you know. This is one of my favorites right here. Oh, you like that one? <laughs> Rule, so you, know? you got to do a second one with the five second rule with that. <laughs> He's been down for five minutes. We got to. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. And that one, you know, I have like the, the two hot dog ones on fridge magnets and stuff. And, and people, people tend to like hot dog related, sausage related cartoons. And then the, the comment was, you know, oh, well, a sausage party. You know, people get, would say that. I was like, well, no, I was doing mine before that you know i was but doing I, comic strips about sausages a long time before that right way before <laughs> the movie, way before the movie i never met seth rogan <laughs> <laughs> this one this one's fun <laughs> That is funny. And I'm glad you used mustard, not ketchup, because that's the only way I like my hot dogs is with mustard on it. Okay, so this has been like, I've been in a discussion about hot dogs about a week ago. Yeah. And you can't put both on a hot dog. Is that true? I cannot. Really? What about you, Patrick? I do every time I eat them. <laughs> both, both, right? Ketchup well, so, and mustard and relish and mayonnaise. So I like, I like a <laughs> I'm a hot, spicy mustard kind of guy, and the ketchup only gets in the way. Really? Oh yeah. So my was telling me she 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 can't have ketchup. She she said it doesn't make any sense on a hot dog, and I was like, well, I don't. It, that's what I was raised with. That I never heard anybody say different, and now you're the second person in a week. <laughs> 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 Must be true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean. Shoot, in, I, in my I, house, everything went on the hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, in our house, when growing up, hot dogs went in everything else. <laughs> you know, we need some meat. Let's cut up a hot dog and put it in uh, mac and cheese. <laughs> uh, so, I like that's gross. great. These are awesome. I'm going to save some more for uh, for for later. So, okay. so what made you decide to do hot dogs? <laughs> <laughs> to focus on the hot dog <laughs> i don't know you know 
some uh, the shape and lends itself to humor i think a little bit more than a hamburger <laughs> <laughs> well i was i was wondering you know it this is one of those things that kind of fascinates me is that over time maybe you develop this affinity for hot dogs you never intended to you didn't intend to become the hot dog cartoonist but <laughs> well, it's, it's funny it shows you know, up i've sent i've sent like maybe um uh, like four or five different cartoon hot dog cartoons to the new yorker you know because i'm trying to make that happen you know I'm <laughs> in there. i don't know if i attached a black and white one that i sent to you but that was that was one that i actually sent to the new yorker and this was this one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but there's like different subject matters that I keep revisiting. And when I talk about actually sometimes when I feel like I get like a little too um, set, a little mundane sometimes is I keep doing, I keep doing the same subject over and over again. Like with dogs, you know, I, I keep, I have like so many dog cartoons. I don't own a dog, you know. But for some reason, they lend themselves to, you know, the jokes that I do. Well, um, Ian, do you ever run into this? Um, you know, like, I deal with this with Life of the Party. Sometimes I'll have the characters walking, and then they're walking again, and then they're walking again. Like, five or six different comics, they're all walking. Yeah. But I change the text every single time. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, I, right. I remember that with, with comics like Peanuts, you know, where – these these not cliches but these these routines develop where it's always you know um charlie brown and linus on the wall or it's you know lucy and charlie brown with the football those kind of patterns develop right right well and you know sometimes they you know my cartoons tend to be static sometimes and to me you know it, it bores me a little bit sometimes so you know i'll you know recently i've made a move a little more you know made things happen you know, I'm not trying to be lazy when they're static. Mm -hmm. um, but then sometimes, like, you know, if, if you look at them all together, they all look the same to me. You know, so. I, I, I feel you on that one at times. I, I get that with my own work. So. Yeah. And I, and I think that's the difference sometimes but why when you do a, a single panel cartoon versus a, a full on layout of a storyline cartoon. Yeah. You know, you're limited <laughs> to one panel to put everything in. Yeah, and, but, and you know, the, the, the goal is to try to make sure it doesn't look the same as all the other ones that have the same, you know, characters, I guess. That hot dog uh, looks a little rotten on the inside. Yeah, yeah. I, that, that, <laughs> that, that, years ago, I've, I've become a much, much better uh, sausage artist. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I do find it interesting, though, the challenge of getting the – the image gag and the, the writing all the work in just one panel. I mean, uh, for a long time, I did a three panel where it was like a setup, yeah. uh, you know, an intermediate and then the punchline. Yeah. But trying to reformat that to fit in just one image to me is a, a really interesting puzzle. I would, um, since I've always done it, you know, I used to do back in college, I, I, I would do, um, I just had sketchbooks full of single panel cartoons, but, um, as, as sort of a uh, exercise, I would try to do four panel cartoons. And well, that's and, disgusting. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, realize that some of these cartoons make people stop following me on Go Comics. Ah, <laughs> uh, come on! I piss people off all the time too with uh, Life of the Party. <laughs> Actually, I was going to ask that. I was going to ask, you know, what's what's the uh, the worst critique you've gotten? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you... I, mean, I, I had uh, I had a lady um, tell me that it was disgusting and I am no longer going to follow your comic and then like but like eight other people followed me then you know it was like you know they, they were like oh that's awesome I'm going to follow you know so you know, <laughs> sort of, uh, offset those but I, you know I, the very worst critique I've ever gotten um, was a guy who um, you know, I, I, I won't cuss on the show, but he, you know, it was like F off Lonnie Millsap at gmail.com. That's what the, the email came to me from, <laughs> you know, 
I'm so sorry. Like, I'm, I'm yeah. sorry I'm laughing too, but I just. Wait, was, you're saying you got an email was, from yourself like that? Well, no, it, yeah, no, it just said fivelonig at gmail.com was the email address to me. And then he itemized all the stuff that he thought was terrible about my cartoons, you know. And, oh, man. Like paragraphs, you know. Hey, someone had a lot of time on their hands. Right, right. And it was like the first time I think I received like a negative thing like that. Uh, and and I, I I didn't know, really know what to do. You know, um, I actually contacted Keith Knight, you know. <laughs> and I, I said, do you have stuff like this? I never had this. He's like, that's awesome. You know, that, <laughs> well, who was it? The guy that draws Luann. Um, oh, Jim? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and we were talking to his daughter, and he was saying that, uh, and she was telling us that, that the hate mail that they get on that at times, like, it's over the most dumbest things. Like, you didn't put the dog on a leash. Why is the dog not on a leash? You oh, know? yeah, yeah. Oh, are you they, talking about the guy who draws uh, Luann? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. What's his name? I can't, you know, I, I got can't, the name. I, same here, and I feel real bad, but I forgot it. But uh, <laughs> Greg, Greg uh, Evans. Okay. I, and, I believe. Yeah, and, and we're just sitting there, and I look at it like my audience gaming and fantasy and it's amazing how polarizing they can be within the gaming and fantasy group you know right. and it's like well you didn't draw your elf like a tolkien elf and i'm like well, wait a second <laughs> there's a lot of different elves out there and right. then that becomes its own joke <laughs> well that's part of the challenge isn't it to have that thick skin and <laughs> yeah well, and I, I think it's thicker now is it your sticker now it's getting there i mean there's moments where like i said you you and I don't know if you do this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at the comic. Um, I, I, if you get this too, where you have to self-censor a little bit, where you yeah. think something is really funny, and yet you know that once that goes, <laughs> you're, someone's going to say something. Right, right. And, and yeah. And that's hard to do. But at the same time, I've started to learn too that when people comment about certain things or they'll make a comment, I'm like, oh, that's, that's Fodor for me for another comic yeah because that's how i address it <laughs> you back? what you answer back no no no. i don't answer them back directly but i will draw oh. my answer back i'll okay. make it its own comic <laughs> oh, yeah. and that's the best you know and and that's something that i think it's amazing how many people are so um stuck within their own um well <laughs> I'm not going to say they're, they're so loyal to the, whatever they follow. Right. And, and the minute you say something or do something that doesn't go inside, it's like telling a Harry Potter fan that, uh, you know, that uh, Rick R Rorden's books are better than that, you know, cause he's yeah. about Greek gods and the Harry Potter people, ah, you know, so <laughs> Star Wars and Star Trek, you're going to piss somebody off one way right. or another. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, and I guess in some ways, you know, getting a reaction is better than not one. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, you know, I did, you know, I didn't that particular day when I got that comment, I didn't really appreciate it. Right. And I just didn't know what to do, you know, but now I've gotten enough of those. <laughs> I guess I'm used to it. And, 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 but I've gotten so many positive comments that it, you know, it washes those out. You know. So, do you find an issue where, when you put something up, you think is completely hilarious, <laughs> but nobody else does? And I've had that problem before, where it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. This is I great. mean, I have, I have particular comics that, that I will always remember and will not understand why they didn't like it like I did. And now, you know, um, with Instagram my numbers of people liking my things have gone like way down suddenly. Okay. You know? I'm feeling the same pinch and I think they changed their algorithm. I, I guess but it's the difference between getting between two and 10,000 likes on something down to 200 likes. Yeah, I know. I know what you're feeling. Wow. Yeah. And it, it's, you know, and so I joke around with my girlfriend. I just, I tell her, I said, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the New Yorker didn't come through today, you know, like Friday is the day they tell you if you got one in and didn't get one in today either. And so my career is over. So thank you guys for. Uh, you know. 
Well, I can promise well, you, you need, that your you... Instagram followers are going to go even lower after this. <laughs> so now you got to draw a hot dog banging its head on the table trying to write a joke. <laughs> Just kind of flapping there back and forth because that, you know, they're limp. <laughs> 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 well you guys want to see my dad joke yeah let's yeah. see your dad joke yeah the best i could come up with <laughs> um here we go let's see did it come up it says it has started screen sharing okay you gotta double click so we can see the full screen there we go no oh. More oh that's good <laughs> <laughs> my dad joke. <laughs> now i gotta draw a hot dog in mine i don't have a hot dog in mine i like I, that <laughs> i'm i'm feeling left out here i i definitely uh you have fast food though yeah i do but i want to put a hot dog in it now <laughs> <laughs> it's the theme you gotta stick with the theme I hot know. dogs are all the rage right now travis they sure are no in fact <laughs> i I don't know why I didn't think of this before. I ate hot dogs for dinner. <laughs> Are you kidding? No, no. We had some, uh, <laughs> we barbecued some hot dogs. <laughs> See, now I want to go do pigs in a blanket and cover them in chili. <laughs> now we enter the food portion of our show. Making me hungry. Oh, yeah. I mean, anybody that names their comic bacon, I mean, <laughs> you're going to think about food. And I name my comics and my car bacon. <laughs> So what what was the story behind that? Behind what big name? Yeah. Um you know, um honestly it's like a pretty simple story. You know, um you know, Go Comics reached out and asked if I wanted to do a comic and I said, Yeah, and then I never had a name for it. And they just said come up with something and I just thought, you know, everybody loves bacon, you know, let me go ahead and name it that. And I put the umlaut over the O, so just in case someone had a comic named Bacon somewhere. <laughs> a big <bacon. laughs> It always looks like a, to me, it looks like a face with a mouth wide open. It does, and I've used that. I've done that before, too. <laughs> That's awesome. That is so cool. So, yeah. And, yeah, and with the car, you know, since it was taken already, like the regular spelling of Bacon, I just did it phonetically um so it could match the car and people would sort of ask what it, i've only had one person say something <laughs> i've had the license plate since february so maybe it's not working well you haven't been really out either with a lot of people so you know when we get back to to moving around then you'll have a chance to explain it more yeah yeah that's true, that's true. <laughs> Bacon. <laughs> so um you know, changing subjects just a little bit. Um, how did you get your start? Um, you know, the, the, I would say that my start would be the first book. And, 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 you know, I was living in Georgia then. Uh, that was, uh, you know, I sort of tasked myself with finishing a book before 2010, like during 2009. And, uh, um, and I just tried to make a book to the specs of what I would want in a book, just after looking at books in a bookstore and, and me thinking that my stuff was funnier. And so, <laughs> you know, I put the book together, finished it, got them printed there, at this printing company in bulk and uh, um, finished it on like, I think in December, end of December of 2009. And then uh, just sort of sent some out to people that I knew and and sort of lucked out um you know uh, um have you guys ever heard of a guy named gary panther that sounds familiar yeah it does was, uh, well you know when i right before i went to college between high school and college he was my teacher i went to otis art institute over summer and uh i took a cartooning class and and uh he sort of inspired me to to draw and have sketchbooks then so by the time this book came around when I was old, um, I mailed one to him. He's best friends with, uh, you know, with Matt Groening. And they curated an exhibition in Baltimore uh, at the American Visionary Art Museum. And then they requested like eight of my drawings for the 
museum exhibition that ran like a year and a half. Oh, how awesome. Yeah. And, uh, um, and so I was in there like next to, you know, like other famous, well, famous cartoonists and stuff and, and artists. And so, uh, you know, that worked out really well. And then, so the second book came out, you know, about a year, year and a half later, just because that was such a good feeling. I just wanted to experience that kind of feeling again. And, uh, you know, and the audience just builds slowly over time. I don't have a, I don't think I have a particularly large audience, but over time it's grown a little bit. And, uh, but that's how I really got the start, uh, you know, and, and you just kept drawing ever since. And just sort of lucked into a lot of stuff. It's been very, uh, you know, very lucky certain things that happened, timing-wise. Right. I can understand that. Yeah. That's that's very, very cool. Um, who are your inspirations? Oh. Besides well, Patrick. <laughs> I mean, of course, you know, I don't know if you ever, if you know how I, I met Patrick. Patrick was... <laughs> he was spamming my email. I didn't know yes. who he was. <laughs> a cartoon was coming to me. What, was that every day? Uh, at that point, it was like three times a week. Three times a week. But it were, they were so bad, it probably felt like every day. No, no, they were good. <laughs> but I, and I thought you were like a famous cartoonist. And you know, I was like, I was like cartoons, and I, I'd never met you. This is because I think Chris, Chris, uh, um, why can't I think of his last name? Introduce me to you. Um, uh, Chris from, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, oh. uh, you know, Chris the animator. Oh. <laughs> the, the, the animator guy. I feel really bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they, uh, uh, tune, tune hole, Chris. Tune hole from Tune oh. Hole. Man. <laughs> no, you Really? <laughs> no. Well, you know, I had this habit of when I was early in the conventions, whenever I'd hand out a business card and somebody gave me one, uh -huh. I put them on my mailing list. <laughs> oh, really? So, oh, so, so I must have gotten your business card somewhere. <laughs> 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 but it was good because uh, in the end, we became friends. So I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chris Allison, you don't remember oh. him? Oh, gosh. He was a cap. He introduced, me. he introduced you to me, I think, at a CAPS meeting. And I was like, you're the guy that was sending those emails. You're the guy that was spamming me three <laughs> right. times a week. And, they were, and I think I sent mine back one time. Like, it took like, a long time for me to work the nerve back to send one of my cartoons back. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, is this guy, like, is he going to... You know, I thought, I didn't know who you were. I thought, you know, you might be like real mean or something, you know. <laughs> I was like a <laughs> <laughs> And it was the start of a beautiful friendship. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> who else inspired you besides Patrick? <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, so, you know, well, Gary Panther is one, you know, because he was the teacher um, he's really well known for, um, he has an Emmy for, uh, you know, the, the set design uh, for Pee Wee's Playhouse, you know, so, oh. he, you know, so his art style all looks like that. He's like a big time artist. He lives in New York now. Uh, but uh, so he did, uh, I guess they call him like sort of the, the grandfather of, of uh, punk rock art, you know, he, so he was really big during that time. He was the first teacher I had that you know, he had a mohawk the first time I met him. You know, I was like, is he a You know, I, <laughs> I didn't know what to think. I was 17, you know, and this guy had a mohawk and I was like, you know, you know, but then after a few weeks, he's like the, he's like the best teacher I ever had, you know. So he inspired me. Uh, I would say down the line, you know, The Simpsons inspired me. Um, and I got to meet Matt Groening like way before he was famous and everything. Um, and, uh, you know, the, uh, or even, you know, like Charlie Brown, you know, the, those were the first cartoons I really remember drawing where we're like trying to draw Snoopy correctly, you know. Garfield. Gar <laughs> Trying to draw Garfield right for years. Yeah. 
it takes me <laughs> forever. Yeah, so it's the same thing. So you you met him before, Jim Davis? No, 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 no. I I've never met Jim Davis. Um, uh, you know, it's funny. Here, I'm gonna switch my screen real quick, shall we? Yeah. But, um, I never met Jim Davis, but I I grew up on Garfield. Um. <laughs> uh, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> 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 but, uh, you know, I look at some of the inspiration that I had, too. It's, it's very similar. It was, it, it was, you know, I got him at Davis Inspired, but so did Bill Waterson uh, uh, and Gary yeah. Larson. Yeah. And, and I like them. I, I never, I, I don't, you know, I could never draw like that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if I picked people that I could draw like, but there were, you know, there were other cartoons like, uh, um, I used to like Herman. Uh, oh, I did. Yeah, Herman was awesome. Yeah. Um, and it was single panel, too. Right, right. And so there were, uh, there was one called, uh, now I can't remember the name. Uh, there, there are a couple other single panel, panel ones. Um, uh, had, um, even uh, like, uh, like later on, Bizarro. Ziggy, Ziggy was single, Dennis the Menace. <laughs> Yeah, not so much for me. <laughs> yeah, Gary. Uh, there was one called Mr. Boffo. Mr. Boffo I used to like. There was I used to think that was like better than uh, better than any other single panel cartoon back then. You know, um, it just made me laugh. It was like weirder than The Far Side. Oh, Bizarro know? tried to be weirder than The Far Side too. Do you remember yeah. Bizarro? Uh, yeah, and you know I know him now, and it's like it's weird that I get to have gotten to meet these people that it doesn't seem like that was ever supposed to happen you know well uh, what's what's that like you know joining the national cartoonist society or or caps you know what's that like being a part of that and getting to know some of your uh, your heroes i guess yeah it, it's it's a great feeling you know um joining caps um it was that was all about luck you know, um, I met uh, Tone Rodriguez uh, just by chance, and he invited me there. And then, like Sergio was there, and 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 uh, you know, uh, that was enough. Like, if Sergio went to you know meetings half of the time, that's enough for me. You know, oh heck yeah, uh, guys like you guys and get to hang out and talk and stuff. I I, I enjoy that quite a bit. Um, it, it's it's um sort of humbling to be around those guys because I don't feel like I really belong in the same room. You do. Uh, well, thank you, but I, you know. You do. Uh, you belong. I'm glad to be there. I'm glad to be there. So, <laughs> and then for NCS, it's like the same thing. It's like, you know, sort of another version of the same thing. Uh, you know, I, I uh, you know, to see some of those guys and, and uh, like, oh, that's the guy who does that. Like, I, I think I'm more aware of the people's work from NCS more than than I was from uh, <clears throat> from Caps because I think uh, you know there's a, a sort of a lot of storyboard stuff and and maybe behind the scenes stuff going on at Caps mm -hmm. a little, um, but there's so much talent all over. It, it is not you know uh, at, at NCS I got to meet uh, like uh, cartoonists whose work it seems like I had been looking at since I was a kid. But now they're only like two years older than me, so I, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand how that could be, you know, like the guy Kevin Fagan. He does Drabble. Um, yeah, he's in the LA Times or or used to be, and I met Do they him. Still have comics? Oh, yeah, no. they're very small. <laughs> so small, <laughs> but you know, meeting him was almost shocking to me. You know. Um, uh, uh, meeting Dan Peraro, who does B Bizarro, was, is shocking to me, you know, or seeing the, the New Yorker cartoonists like Matt, Matt Diffie, uh, and then like seeing their work in there, and then like that guy has something in the New York. It, that's amazing. I can't believe it. You well, know? You've got something now in the New Yorker. Yeah, and now we're saying that about you. Yeah, but that means they dropped their quality or something. Right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> the magazine would have my work in it, you know. And then, I, you know, I got to be, my magazine, my cartoon was like in the last Playboy magazine. Like, you know, they <laughs> out of business, like in, because of COVID, 
it went out of business in February, March, and my, I got a cartoon in there. Just in time. In, there, in the final issue of Playboy magazine. <laughs> it was a rejected New Yorker cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, was, you have to blank that part out, but uh, yeah, but it's a but, clean, uh, it's thoughtful, you know. Thinking about, thinking thoughtful. about what's, <laughs> it's for the articles. So, right. um, thinking about the future, though, where, where do you see uh, uh, work for cartoonists, and uh, how do you see the the industry developing over the next few years? I mean, of course, now everything's up in the air, but what do you see happening? It's still, you know, it still seems to me like people like books. You know, um, uh, I would like ideally to sort of have enough, a large enough following to just be able to sort of pump out books. And then supplement that with getting into different publications. Um, you know, I, I I don't know. I know a few people who seem to be able to do that consistently, like get published consistently. Um, it's not consistent for me yet. Uh, I, I think they've gotten, they bought like 12 cartoons so far, you know. Um, that's definitely but, a start. Yeah, but that's spread over like two and a half years, um, you know. But over time, you know, maybe I can sort of get in there a little bit more. Um, and then I, I think the other thing is um, when you talk about writing, uh, you know, a couple people have noticed that a little bit. And there might be some opportunities out there that, you know, help write for uh, animation, I guess. Um, you know, uh, we're, we're going to hope so. I, do you know, you guys know um, David Calcano? Yeah. He's a, a CAPS member. Yeah. Um, he has an animation firm, and, and uh, I might be doing some stuff with him. That's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. So that's very random, but I, I think I have, like, maybe a little bit of, of affinity to do this kind of stuff. And so, yeah, I like to sort of morph out of my day-to-day, -day, which is not art-related at all. Right. Yeah, I know how that feels. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know um, – this has been a great time talking with you tonight, Lonnie. This is, this is really uh, a real treat. Well, nice I hope I didn't end the week. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I hope I didn't blabber too much. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> no, this, this is perfect. And uh, I'd like to finish our, uh, our question and answer with, with the same yeah. question of all of our guests. See, there we go. There we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. See, I, we got it done. Yep. Look at that. That is, that is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have just had like a couple of scribbles on a page and, you know. <laughs> well, my goal is, is to be faster than Sergio. Oh, well, that's pretty good. You, you're a quick, you're a quick artist. So <laughs> I, I have my goal. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever get there, but I got my goal. <laughs> All right, well, let's jump back. Yeah, well, that uh, – that puts us all to shame there, Travis. That's all. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I do like to ask all our guests the same question to okay. kind of collect everybody's answer. And the, the final question is, uh, is why? Why do you make art? Why do you make comics? You know, I, you know the, the, I think the quick answer is it's, it's like a lot of fun to make people laugh. You know, it's, it's uh, – um, if I could just do it all the time and not have to worry about, you know, other things, I, I, I would, you know, um, but the, you know, the satisfaction from, from the laughter is like kind of amazing to me. You know, I, I can't believe that I can make people do that. You know? <laughs> so, uh, did, yeah. did you ever try anything else like, like stand up or any other kind of comedy or? No, I'm not, I'm not really good in front of people. You know, I, I don't hear myself when I talk. And so, I, you know, I might be a little funny in front of a microphone, but I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> so. I tried table dancing once, but it didn't do anything for me. <laughs> you have to do it like 10,000 times before. <laughs> before no, <you> thanks. <laughs> well, I, I understand that because I think I, think I uh, in, in high school, I was always too timid to try like drama or something like that. Yeah. But, but I, I liked the idea of acting. But I yeah. felt like art was a way I could do it at a distance where nobody's really seeing me. Right, right. And I, you know what? I will take the 
the notoriety that comes with some of this stuff. Yeah, I mean, you had the thing with with uh, Jim Halpert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was like great. That was really really great. <laughs> you know, now like all hooked up. You know, you yeah. know, isn't that but that's fun? You know, isn't that fun to get that sort of recognition? You know, oh, I, I live for it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I enjoy that. I enjoy that part. Um, when I was doing the quick draw, you know, with the Sergio and Scott, you know, it. it WonderCon, this that was like the scariest thing. I was so on the verge of saying no, you know, because I was like, what am I going to do up there? But it was like fun. I guess I could do no wrong, no matter how bad it looked, you know, sort of talk myself out of it. And then Sergio told me like later, he's like, I don't know what I'm drawing up there half the time. I don't know what I'm doing. So <laughs> <laughs> like that, then I, I can be okay. So <laughs> Well, I think I think that's a good place to to end it, you guys. Um, learn from the masters and pass it on to the next generation when it's our turn. You know, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, this has been a great treat. I really enjoyed chatting with you, fellas. Um, Lonnie, where can people find you? Uh, people can go to my people can go and see my comic at uh, uh, gocomics dot com slash bacon, and then or the uh, New Yorker. Or the New Yorker, my <laughs> here, uh, and then also you know my website LonnieMillsap.com. You can buy my uh, my books and look at my comic, and then also uh, uh, go get it, follow my Instagram. You get new cartoons all the time, and then my other Instagram, which is well, the, the main Instagram is Lonnie Millsap. The secondary one is Bacon underscore bacon tasty that's right well thanks again fellas um, we're gonna sign off but uh have a good week good to see you keep you up too. the good work thanks for having me you guys i had a good time all right take care everybody all right see you later. <laughs>